boom, I slam on that throttle, I'm gone. I smoked them on the freeway. And man, it's such a good feeling to do that in an old truck. I think that's part of the reason why it's just so exciting. Well, hello my friends, Kevin here, and thanks for watching this video in our Bottom Line series, where we focus on everything about custom lower trucks. And before we get started, I wanna ask everybody to like this video, and also to subscribe to this channel, as it helps us produce more videos in the future. Well, with that out of the way, let's continue on with our video and the topic of why are C10s so popular. If you've been to any truck show in the last couple of years, you probably noticed that uh, C10s are everywhere, all different types, patina builds, painted builds, uh, lifted ones, lowered ones, ones that have airbags that are slammed all the way to the ground, also ones that are built uh, ready to race. And they're absolutely killing the show scene, uh, scooping up all the awards at all these shows. And you might be wondering why this is all happening. So uh, yeah, let me break it down for you. Well, first of all, these classic Chevy trucks were built to be workhorses, uh, to go on a farm or do some hauling of some kind. And uh, there was just a number of them out there uh, because that's what they were meant to do. And I think we all have some sort of connection to these trucks, whether it be a grandfather that had one, an uncle or a father, or maybe you just saw one in a neighborhood regularly and it burned an impression in your mind. And uh, some of you guys uh, like to scoop up these trucks and build them so that you can cruise them around and think about those times when uh, you didn't have to think about life and when things were a bit easier. So I think that just goes back to why we are so fond of these trucks in the first place. Now you might have noticed that there's different names for some of these trucks and they all look pretty much like a C10. But uh, let me break that down for you. Basically, any Chevy truck uh, from 1960 to 1987 uh, was in the CK series of trucks. Now what that means is um, for the two-wheel drives they were C, uh, C series and the four-wheel drives they were the K series. So that breaks that down for you. I hope that explains it a little bit. So. Uh, when you get into C10, what that means is that's a two-wheel drive half ton, and then you get your C20, that's a three-quarter ton, a C30, that's a one ton. Same thing with the four-wheel drives, a K10's a half ton, a K20 is a three-quarter ton, and a K30 is a one ton. So hope that explains that all for you. Now let's get a little more specific on some of these trucks. There are a couple generations of them, uh, starting with the uh, first gen, which was the 1960 to 66 truck. Now this truck was revolutionary as um, the previous body style, the uh, Task Force trucks that ended in 1959 had a straight axle. Now from 1966 on up, uh, they had an independent front uh, suspension system, which made it easier to drive these trucks. So that's why um, people started using them on a regular basis because uh, the ride was a bit more comfortable and that uh, first gen C10 fit right in with that. And uh, that's where some of the popularity grew from. And uh, I can tell you that for a long time, those trucks were kind of like the ugly stepchild of everything because uh, their body lines were a little bolder and um, people didn't like them as much. They kind of called them a refrigerator, but they can be cleaned up. They're personally my favorite because the body style is so distinctive. Uh, it's different from everything else and they can look really good. Chevy trucks built between the years of 1967 and 1972 are known as the second generation of CK trucks. And these are by far the most popular versions of classic Chevy trucks out there right now. Uh, so many people like them. It's hard to find them at decent prices and trucks that aren't rusted through. It's just, it's absolutely hard to find these trucks. But the reason for their popularity, I think, is because they had some of the uh, technology from the first generation in them, but the body style just looks slick. When you build these things out, uh, they look like a truck that's later uh, than something that was built in the late 60s. So it's a no brainer to see why people like them. Uh, but yeah, like I said, finding one that's a good project that uh, has a decent price, isn't uh, damaged too bad, is pretty tough these days. Now let's not forget the trucks that were built from 1973 to 1987. Uh, these are the third gen CK trucks, better known as the square bodies. Uh, because they have a square body with rounded edges, these things are very popular. Uh, now they're also a little bit more attainable as they were available for quite a number of years. So there's a lot of them out there. But yeah, it's still kind of hard to find one of these trucks in good condition. But what I liked about these trucks was that GM had better marketing during that time. And they offered a, a number of different packages on them like the Bo James, uh, the Gentleman Jim, uh, even I think it was the Chevy Sport which had some stripes on it and just really encapsulated that era. So when you build one of these trucks, it's really exciting to see. 
Now, I do want to include the SUVs in this as well. You have the Suburbans and you have the Blazers. Uh, Suburbans haven't caught on as well because I think uh, they're just so big, maybe a little bit harder to find. Uh, but Blazers have caught on like wildfire right now. Uh, absolutely crazy. The reason is, is because a lot of people that have money that want to have something that's maybe like a street rod or something to that level, uh, they can do so and justify it because they can uh, fit their family in there. So they have an award-winning truck that they can cruise around, fit the family in, uh, don't have to worry about you know everybody you know not getting a ride, and it just kind of makes sense. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of popularity with those these days. Another reason why I think these trucks are so popular is that they're a lot more affordable than their muscle car counterparts. Now we all love the muscle cars, the Camaros and all that. Um, they're just great cars, they've got a lot of styling. That's why people are looking to trucks because they can't afford them. They can build them and do some of the same things those muscle cars do at a cheaper price and they still have uh, the looks of that era. And if you build an SUV like a Blazer, you can fit your family in there and you can all have fun. Out of the box, these trucks were fun because they had either a powerful uh, inline six engine or a small block V8 and even a big block V8. It just made them fun. Had plenty of power to scoot around in one of these trucks. And hey, if you get a project with uh, one of these engines, you can rebuild them for pretty cheap. It doesn't take that much uh, to get some good horsepower out of them and just smoke other people on the road. And I think that's very exciting. And if that's not enough for you guys, they're pretty easy to drop an LS engine into, which is pretty much the best engine that's ever been made. Uh, the most attainable and uh, pretty reasonable, inexpensive to get and to put in one of these trucks. And once you do so, man, it's a whole lot of fun. And take it from me, as I have a 1962 GMC, a truck of that same era, and it has a 383 stroker engine in it. And man, that thing's fast. It's like about 500 horsepower. I live in Orange County, California. There's a lot of luxury vehicles and people that think they're going fast or have cars that can go fast. And when I hit the freeway, uh, some of these people look at my truck and they think, oh, it's got a, lot of bu a bunch of rust on it and it's gonna be slow. Boom, I slam on that throttle, I'm gone. I smoke them on the freeway. And man, it's such a good feeling to do that in an old truck. I think that's part of the reason why it's just so exciting. Let's say you just picked up a truck and it's a project that's damaged, needs some love. Well, you're in luck because we live in a great time as there's a number of companies that have great reproduction products available these days. Companies like LMC Truck, Classic Industries, and Brothers Trucks all have great quality parts uh, that can get your truck back into shape. Now, I think some of the thinking uh, back in the day was that these parts weren't great uh, because you have to finesse them, let's say like on body panels, but you're gonna have to do that no matter what. Even if you find uh, old pieces from a junkyard, uh, you're gonna have to finesse those back on and you may even have some body damage that you're gonna have to body work. So as I see it, I think it's better to start with newer items to get your truck back into shape uh, because it's gonna save you some time in the long run. So yeah, it's a great time to rebuild these trucks. Adding to the excitement, you can build one of these trucks entirely from scratch. Uh, more specifically, the 67 to 72 trucks as my friends over at Premier Street Rod offer a full body kit on these trucks. And I did a video with them, which was actually the first in the series uh, when they were building advanced design cabs and task force cabs. And uh, it's a little bit similar process to how they're building the C10 cabs. So if you wanna learn more about them, uh, check that video out by clicking the link in the description below. Uh, they also told me that they uh, have a blazer body that's by far their most popular. And uh, what guys are doing is they're taking these bodies, they're slapping them on a brand new chassis uh, that are available from a number of companies. And yeah, pretty much you can shortcut your way to success with one of these kits. Now, when it comes to suspension, there is a plethora of components out there available uh, that really do the job well. So you don't have to do any fabrication. Uh, anybody can pretty much install these things. Uh, and it, you can go any direction you want. Roadster Shop, I know, has a uh, lifted chassis they've been offering. It's a little bit pricey, but if that's the direction you want to go, that's where it's at. Uh, there's other coilover uh, chassis, uh, suspension components that are available, even bolt-on front end uh, or back end kits, as well as airbags. You can completely uh, bolt on an airbag kit and have your truck slam on the ground all by working on it in your garage. Above anything else, I think these trucks are simply more popular because they just look so good. Their uh, styling is unlike anything that's made these days. And I tell you, driving one on the road is just a feeling I can't describe. Uh, it's just so amazing to have something that's decades old, keeping up with everything on the road and catching attention. On top of that, I think these trucks are a solid investment as the prices are rising with time. 
Now, I know a number of years ago when the trucks uh, started to gain popularity, a lot of people thought maybe uh, they were at a plateau, maybe the values were gonna go down, but they haven't. If you've seen some of the auctions lately, prices are going up, and it's not unusual to see some of these C10s go for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, do mind you, uh, they have put a lot of money in them, but I know that some of these guys have profited. Like my buddy Dan over at Hogan Built, he had a blazer he built for uh, Travis Barker, the drummer of Blink-182, and he ended up auctioning the uh, blazer off at Barrett Jackson and got a whopping $400,000 for this thing. Now, that's absolutely incredible, and it was not a one-time wonder, as he did the same thing in 2023. He got $400,000 for another blazer. So it's easy to see uh, that there is some money in there, and it's great to see that as well, and that uh, if you put the right products, have the right styling on these trucks, uh, they really are an investment. If you're into things like baseball and apple pie, chances are you're into C10 trucks just like the rest of us. But where do we go from here? I don't know. I think the sky's the limit as there's a lot of interest in these trucks and it doesn't seem like it's backing down. So if you can get your hands on one, I suggest you do so now. Well, my friends, that just about does it for this video and it's time for me to sign off. As always, please like this video as it helps us produce more in the future. And if you have anything to say, please drop that stuff in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a future video and we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.